Welcome back, so happy to see you again and today we're going to show you 12 different examples on how you can be maximally productive. We're going to use this website and whatever person this AI decides to show, we're going to ascribe him or her a profession and also tell how he or she could be maximally productive based on the goals that he or she wants. But before we start, in case you haven't watched the previous video where I detail the seven steps to maximum productivity, the seven steps are know what you want, know what is required to get what you want, do it, avoid distractions, embrace and really become overjoyed by negative emotions, be consistent and repeat and also gain leverage and being better is a form of leverage. With that let's begin and see what the AI has to show for us. So let's call this person Mark. Mark is an ambitious student. He wants to become a medical doctor and he wants to basically score everything A's. So how can we help him do that? First we already know his wants which is getting A's. He's going to dedicate a lot of time for study and especially active recall. So in order to accomplish this, Mark blocks out time for going through and quizzing all the material he needs to know before each test and so forth. And he also blocks out sleep because it's very important for learning. So Mark is definitely not doing all-nighters, so that's the thing we can cross out for sure. When he's studying, he also wants to avoid distractions. So he makes sure to keep the phone on silent mode, turn off the notifications, and whenever he feels that it became too hard and too confusing. He sees it at muscle burn. That's the thing that is going to trigger this learning that he wants. Then it's all about repetition and feedback, he getting the A's, become much better and more efficient in terms of study techniques, so he can have some free time afterwards hanging out with people in the dorm and stuff like that. In terms of leverage, because he's broke, he's going to use chat GPT mostly, not any other services. So that was Mark, let's go over to the next person. Okay, so let's call her Sally. Sally is also a student, but she has other aspirations aside from just getting straight A's. To her, it's more important to think about life after studies, like networking and getting real skills and stuff like that. In order to do that, Sally will only block one hour to go through the material and make sure that she got it at least somewhat correctly. Then she will dedicate her evenings to meeting people, whether it's professionally or non-professionally, and also spend the entire afternoon working on side hustle. So as you can see there are a lot going on in her place so in order to accomplish this she wants to be totally focused avoid distractions when necessary but of course when she's out and doing some stuff she can check on email and social media and stuff like that. It's also very important for her to be more mindful with having a productivity system and making sure that all the thoughts around the side hustle does not interfere with her study time and vice versa and also make sure to not compare herself to the best students in her classes because she's playing a different game. She's playing the long game which probably is going to work out very well for her. So now it's all about repetition, working hard, tracking progress and most of all be sure to be on top of her game and also leaving time for the unexpected. And in terms of leverage she definitely is more focused on automation and chat GPT and so that was solid. Now let's see what person we will get. Okay, so let's call him Bob. Bob is a writer who wants to be published at the New York Times. He would definitely need to write a very good book for it and navigate in the publishing industry. So that's what he's focused on now, calling various agents and telling him or her about himself and also making sure that all the process towards getting this important book deal gets all according to plan. But now Bob got the book deal, so now he's taking a different approach. Now he's going to definitely hone in on his writing abilities and be able to craft compelling arguments with stories and stuff like that. Realize that all the emotions and frustrations that inevitably come, plus imposter syndrome, is all a part of the process. Right now Bob doesn't deploy a lot of leverage aside from just asking ChatGPT once in a while, but other than that he's definitely on track to get getting a very good book out. So let's take our fourth person, which let's call her Jenny. Jenny is also someone who likes to write books, but she's also realized that the publishing or the traditional way of writing books is a little bit outdated. Since she has a day job as a marketer, she's realized the power of growing your own audience and also self-publishing your own work. So she's more focused on getting this constant writing habit in on writing, let's say 5,000 words a day. Jenny is very ambitious. She needs to be mindful of her calendar and make sure that whenever she's working, whether it's marketing, 
marketing or her own books that it all is performed with absolute no distractions. And this is a sustainable schedule for her, which she can repeat at all end. And in terms of leverage, she got her audience now, which is growing, but it's a form of leverage since it can always compound on its own. So now we have four examples, eight more to go. Let's call her Josephine. Josephine is a gamer who really likes to play Pokemon Go, like me in the past life, and she wants to be the best of the world at it. She's definitely tracking the stats, making sure that she gets the initial playtime, being the right rates and in the right circumstances and so forth, so she can sustain it while doing her day job in the office. And she also gets that long-term perspective that she might not be the best now, but in probably three years and four years, she will definitely be on the top as long as she stays consistent, which is what she does. And that was my strategy too back when I was playing. Now we got a different gamer, let's call her Amy. Amy wants to be good at this Pokemon Go game too, but she also has other stuff. She has a family and she really wants to be there at the most important moments of her relatives and so forth. And that's something I want to underscore right now. You don't need to be ambitious in order to be maximally productive. It's all a case of knowing what you want and then don't do anything else that does not contribute to what you want. So Amy makes sure that every day she walks a particular walk in the park with her children so they can play as well. But she's also mindful that because she's not the best she will not compare herself to the more hardcore players. So now we got our seventh person, let's call her Laura. Laura is definitely an ambitious salesperson who wants to become the best in the team and close the most clients and she definitely hones in on the sales process itself, listening back to recordings and be sure to be as non-distracted as possible so she can dedicate full attention to the prospect. And then it's all about repetition and follow-up. Then we got uh, Molly here, which is an entrepreneur. So as an entrepreneur, Molly is not only responsible for sales, but also for the other parts of the business, fulfillment and building the product and taxes of various sorts. Having this productivity system to write down everything she has on top of mind, be able to focus on the right thing and most of all, avoid shiny objects. It is very tough in the beginning and Molly is definitely living poor, but she also has the long-term perspective to know that probably in three years, years, four years, five years, she got enough of a product market fit. So in terms of leverage, she can really deploy all the four ones. And now we got Tom. Tom is a support agent who wants to make sure that he can provide the greatest service to all the company employees. In order to do that, Tom focuses on two things. First, being very knowledgeable in everything HR and so forth. Two, he makes sure to have a very efficient process in terms of handling the tickets. And of course, he's mindful of all the stress and so forth, but he's also learned to reframe all the things that he feels as challenges. All this enables him to be very consistent at his HR role, and he's definitely appreciated among the employees. Okay, so nine down, three to go. Let's call him Sahil, and Sahil wants to be the best software developer in the world. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not a programmer, so whatever I'm going to say now might sound totally out of whack. And in case you are a programmer, please correct me in the comments. I really mean that so I can pin the comments. Sahil is responsible for the front end of a certain web services. He makes sure to refine the website, make some updates, but most of all, make sure that it doesn't crash. He wants to spend the time in deep focus because programming is hard. And then it's all about consistency from there. So now we got Heather, which is a musician. She wants to definitely make a lot of albums and do a lot of touring and stuff like that. She makes sure to practice her singing and also her guitar chops in order to be able to perform perform very well on stage. But she's also heard about the famous study when the elite violinists was taking more time off and just getting more done because they focus more on deliberate practice. And that definitely involves avoiding distractions and confronting the negative emotions that inevitably occurs when you try to get good at one specific thing. And in terms of leverage, she makes sure to put out everything which she works on YouTube and Spotify and so forth. Last example, we can call him Jim. Jim is a content creator who wants to have a very big YouTube channel. He's focusing on getting better his domain expertise, which in his case is programming again. His videos is all about making programming fun. And he reckons that at least six years he'll be able to make a substantial living out of this YouTube programming thing. And in terms of leverage, he already got code and he already got media in terms of YouTube. And in the future, he will definitely offload a lot of editing. So that was it. And hopefully you've discovered the pattern in whatever profession you have 
happen to be in on how you can be maximally productive using these seven steps. And as always, I'm very interested to hear what you thought about it. Maybe you can give your examples how you apply this productivity seven step blueprint. And until then, thank you so much. And always remember that you are the most productive and amazing human being alive.